That's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. It should be denounced at every opportunity. So yeah, thank you for mentioning that. Does that maybe clarify that? Yes. Yes, I think so. Thanks. Thanks for asking. Thanks for your comments. That's great. It's so fascinating to hear someone say, oh, I, I read this article a million years ago or something. <laughs> yeah. But it had a little use. <laughs> Very much. <laughs> No, that's right. That's right. That's right. Well, I mean, little in the sense that, like I mentioned to you, no, they got not one reaction. To mm -hmm. I told you I, from the first paper, I got one reaction. <laughs> a card with one word on it. <laughs> the second, I got nothing. Mm. Nothing. I'm sure you all have described uh, in various ways this evening how homophobic that the whole world is uh, uh, trying to advance these uh, sensibilities. But to share some of the details, uh, I'm sure it's very illustrative <coughs> of this whole pickle. So I think that's really interesting that we get the chance to uh, go over that a little bit. Because it's still quite a life and well for those, again, who are current, uh, uh, have to write and publish them. Uh, okay, other reactions or questions? Yeah, uh, my name is Michael. And I found it particularly interesting when you were sharing about, I guess, movements uh, for gay rights and assimilation versus movements, I guess, that have psychological underpinnings to them, uh, maybe mere assimilation versus something with a little substance underneath it. And I was wondering if you could speak more about that. I, I kind of related to that because, like, for instance, the movement for marriage equality is certainly something I support, mm -hmm. but on some level I feel I wouldn't want my relationships recognized in a replication of heterosexuality. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so I thought that was an interesting thing that you referred uh -huh. to. Uh -huh. Yeah, oh thanks. That was Michael? Yes, yes. Thank you for the, for the interesting um, question about that. Yeah. Uh, and um, I would certainly um, I uh, want to suggest uh, that uh, uh, it's very important that um, um, uh, human beings attempt to struggle with the purpose of their existence rather than simply exist in general. Okay? No matter what we call ourselves, no matter what we, uh, area we wish to focus on or what um, uh, we would like to dedicate ourselves to, uh, in consequence of that consideration, we really are, in my opinion, required ethically to attempt that. So, in my opinion, um, uh, first of all, if an individual is not dedicating their own existence to some kind of better of existence, that's, I think that's the level of where analysis has to start and where things have to get challenged. If that's the case, then I would encourage uh, the picturing of, I don't know what to call this, various metaphors could be used, a, a, a ladder of meaningful activism. A picture of the, the humanist psychologist Maslow's ladder of needs, for example, but that ladder image can be used in lots of different kinds of ways. And I think all kinds of levels of activism are needed, levels of people being involved in the world. I think people should be more and more involved in the world than they are now. Uh, and by the world, I mean the world of politics, the world of power, the world of injustice, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, in my opinion, um, uh, and also the history of politics, in my opinion, demonstrates this. Uh, that unless, whatever it is that humanity is doing, Michael, unless it becomes more psychologically aware of whatever it is that it's doing, it will create folly as it creates events. Okay? In my opinion, the human dilemma is psychologically generated. In Jungian terms, the dilemma is called the problem of the human shadow. The shadow is the part of one's personal psychology that one personally cannot stomach. Okay? And if one has an aspect of one's unconscious psychology which involves personal material which one personally cannot stomach, that material does not remain passively stuck down in there. It acts out in ways in the world which cause tremendous difficulty and trouble. In my opinion, the great evils of the world are caused by this problem. Uh, first of all, by the fact that when uh, parents who, biological parents who breathe and then create these biological children, uh, as in my opinion, part of this whole ideological understanding, uh, wish to um, uh, 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 have, make the children handle the parents' burden of their own shadows. Mm -hmm. Since Adam and Eve, I would suggest this has been so, rather than human beings, and the vast majority of whom read, 
uh, rather than as greedy human beings attempt to grasp their responsibility as human beings accurately, they sloth it off and, and, and use the other animals as imitations, in my opinion. Because that's what it looks like they do, and that's what the other animals do. They just hump, and there's the babies, and then you raise them. <laughs> But in my opinion, there's a whole, for humans, there's a whole ideology and mentality that goes with that, uh, that I alluded to before, uh, uh, which by itself would have never allowed humans to exist, in my opinion. If that's all there was that humans were, we were breeders like all the other animals are breeders, we would never become human, we would never be here, we wouldn't be here now. Okay? My, I'm suggesting there's, there's more, even to people call themselves breeders than just breeding, but in terms of why would nature evolve beings who are so much focused on non-breeding sexuality, uh, is because that is so needed for as a contribution. I don't mean literalistic, because we non-breeding don't produce anything literal from that, okay? I'm saying what we produce, which is so non-literal, is even more important than what is literal. It's even more important than what is literal. Uh, and there are many ways I could try and suggest to you what is demonstrating that that is so, that the, what is produced through these non-material forms of reproduction is more important than what is produced um, through literal reproduction. Uh, and that humanity would not be here today if not for that, okay? Uh, so, in my opinion, this has been a presence all along in humanity, no matter whether humanity is officially homophobic or not. This has always been a presence, always been the evolutionary norm for uh, human development, okay? Um, um, uh, as this great process of, of creativity, even amongst the, the breeding people, moves forward, uh, it must become absolute, meaning that uh, at first what our something that's possible only for those who don't really breed, must become true even of those who do breed. It must become true of everyone. Everyone must in this union sense. Everyone must that individual. Everyone must become psychologically self-realized. There is no psychological self-realization without psychological self-awareness. It's impossible. After a certain point of self-becoming, the self automatically starts to become aware of itself. It is our great curse <coughs> as animals. No other animal has this terrible curse that the more it becomes itself, the more it develops, the more it becomes aware of what it is becoming. And people cannot tolerate that. Mm -hmm. That's not tolerable by our nature because our nature is of the mud. And this is a new evolutionary thing just trying to come in against the old nature. And this new thing is so weird and strange, okay, that um, it's awfully hard to do anything with. Okay, and here we are, you know, whatever, 10,000 years into the so-called, you know, agrarian age and all that kind of crap, and we're a bunch of liars and murderers and hypocrites still. Okay, so all the efforts that have worked in this motion so far are not good enough. It must go further. I'm suggesting all along individuation, psychological development is happening, has been happening all along in humanity, but it's all up to the point of that self-awakening becoming irreversible. And in my opinion, that's where humanity is at now. It's denied self-awakening, to, and the mass, and the group, denied self-awakening, denied self-awakening, and it cannot continue it anymore. It cannot continue it anymore. Because, to share my own personal experience, every human endeavor I have been involved in, every organization, every group of people I've been involved in, has been full of people's psychologies. And if people cannot be responsible and aware of their psychologies, it's insane, it's the law of the jungle. Our whole culture is like this. The insane law of the jungle. It doesn't matter whether I am a housewife at home, or am I a rightist plotting Barack Obama's embarrassment through his birth papers, or I'm a leftist plotting communist revolution. I'm just as much a moron. On the level I'm naming. On the level I'm naming, and that hasn't evolved at all. But essentially, must, must, there can be no avoidance of being psychologically awake. Because as you see how it is, the United is more and more becoming like this is the stuff that has to be aware of. Everyone's more individual and more narcissistic and more about the individual and individual rights and individual rights. Pressure is enormously impossible to stop because Jung calls it the history of the future. Okay, so in my opinion, the next step in politics is psychologically aware people being political. Meaning, I'm no longer in compartmentalization, so that when I'm electing someone, I'm separate from how I feel. Or I'm separate from my defenses. Which is a lie, and all those fucking politicians in the world are hypocrites. Every last one of them is doing a show and an act. I tell you, our whole civilization is an act, and a show, and a scam. 
The whole thing. How are we going to break free? Where is there going to be any real justice? That's politics, okay? So in my opinion, the only politics is psychological awareness. There is no other politics. Everything else is part of the problem and perpetuates the problem. Again, I'm not, again, I'm not arguing against activism. I'm encouraging all activism. Oh, we are past time. <laughs> We are past time. I'm sorry. I get so excited. I get into my topic. <laughs> we'll wrap up. We'll wrap up. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, uh, I think this is um, uh, something that is very interesting. As you see, they don't want us to be entertaining. They're really pressing tonight. And she's staring at me. So, because we're not allowed, it's very illegal to go on because they have to stay here. And they have to work after that. I mean, they have to stay here and work after their official time order. So anyway, you see how it goes. Yes, thank you for that. I was thinking in those terms. Yeah. You did address what I was reflecting on. So excellent, you. excellent. Yeah. OK. Well, we're going to have to wrap it up for this evening. Mm -hmm. My apologies for going on. I can do that and get carried away. I hope you had an entertaining time. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if we didn't get to other questions. And stuff. Thank you very much for your interest in all that. And thank you for the opportunity to share that paper. That is, was a really unique event. So I'm going to turn it back over to Roger. He has a concluding words. So 